This is a Women with Disabilities Victoria podcast. We acknowledge that these podcasts were recorded on the traditional lands of the First Nations people of this country. We acknowledge their elders, past, present and emerging. We acknowledge that sovereignty has never been ceded and this is and always will be Aboriginal land. From the Outskirts is a series of podcasts featuring women with disabilities who live and work in regional Victoria. I'm Liz Wright, a disability activist and advocate. I'm also the Manager of Community Inclusion and Women's Empowerment at Women with Disabilities Victoria. All the interviews were recorded in each person's home or workplace, so from time to time there is unexpected background noise. We hope you enjoy. Leanne and Gary Watson are on a mission to challenge the tourism sector to lift its game when it comes to accessible accommodation. Please be aware that there is some swearing in this episode. Hi, I'm Leanne Watson from Wadawurrung Country in Victoria on the Ballerine Peninsula. And Leanne, you've been living down here for how long? Uh, This time around three and a half years. So you've lived down the peninsula before? Four years actually, four years now. Uh, Yes, uh, 20 years before we came back, um, we'd been here for four years at that stage too um, when our children were quite young uh, and with work and then we decided to move back uh, to really uh, as empty nesters uh, to really to re-enjoy the all that the ballerine has to offer. Oh, God, it's got so much to offer now, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Where are you from, Leanne? Originally Melbourne, um, Melbourne born and bred, the eastern suburbs, and, yeah, that's mostly it really. Just Where'd you the, go to school? I grew up in Donvale itself, um, went to Donvale Primary, Donvale High School, uh, then moved to – then moved – had 12 months in Parkdale when mum and dad were building a new house in Wonturna. Yeah. Went to Wonturna and Wonturna High and then that's where I met my husband now, my husband of 30-odd years. You met at school? Yes, yeah. Oh, I love these stories. <laughs> what were you doing there, Gary? Uh, trying to convince Leanne that she would one day marry me. <laughs> I, was, I, I grew up in about 14 different places in an Air Force family and ended up in um, one turner and we went to high school together for one year before they asked me to leave. Uh, but in that year, I was able to convince Leanne that I was actually worth hanging around. So it's a good year. Wow. So you both met at high school. Then where did your journey take you after that, Leanne? Like where where did you go? Uh, I always sort of had a bit of a hankering to be a teacher, to go to uni. I just thought I would go to uni and be a teacher, but I did muck around in year 12. So I just missed out on the teaching, the whole teaching thing. So I thought, oh, the next best, best option is the bank, surely. So started working for Westpac that year uh, and stayed with him on and off in between having children, three children for another 10 years. Um, And in the meantime, very early on, Gary and I moved out together and then we bought a house. Uh, We had our first child. So we uh, were mostly in Furniture Gully for the first few years. Uh, And then I, so I was staying, uh, yeah, I worked in the bank uh, which was, a, you know, looking back, it's sort of a bit of a shame that, you know, I didn't sort of um, explore more creative pursuits really, but um, but it did as well. Uh, I don't know. And then while I was having kids, I did a bit of um, the party plan type work. So Nutramedics, I sold <laughs> Nutramedics, Tupperware. I did the uh, I, I bought did the all gamut. of those things, yeah. Leanne. <laughs> anyway, I did the gamut. It was all fun. There was a uh, children's clothing company at one stage as well and, um, yeah, it was all it was all great. So I was always very happy to um, be the you know the mum from the castle type thing. The yeah, you know the nurturer, the um, the homekeeper. It just it just was a natural fit for me. I, I was always happy to to be that. When you worked at the bank, was was that in the time where if you were pregnant and you went on mat leave, you couldn't come back or it was all fine? And it was fine by it then. It was past yes. those yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah, I was um, very That's lucky, I, which was great because, yeah, I went back. Oh, I had the three kids within three years and three months um, in total. Yeah. And uh, so I'd sort of go away and come back again, get pregnant, go away. Um, and in the end I didn't go back in <laughs> and we moved down here. So uh, I was very, that was fortunate. I genuinely loved, I remember distinctly feeling, especially when I had to go back and we did, we we bought our house in the 18% mortgage 
you know, yeah, interest rate the, time. Yeah, the Terry years. So as much as I didn't want to and I, like I went back to work the first two days, I had long hair then, I just had my hair over my face just crying into my, you know, into the computer yeah. um, and or into the microfish um, machine. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I still love the smell of meth <laughs> Yeah. But I remember the discussions at lunchtime and, and, you know, and even around the office and just thinking, no, this is not real life. Like real life is back with my family with the you know with my baby and you know with Gary and um and that so I and I really loved that and but I did feel I definitely always felt that sort of probably self-imposed but I think societally imposed um pressure of feeling like I wasn't enough by being happy to be a mum and not being a professional on top of that but don't you think that's the real misnomer about feminism that feminism is about choice for women to live their best yes. life yeah. and if you want to be with your kids that should be your choice and, you, and it's great I love yeah. that yeah so we made a choice together that as my career started to develop and we had opportunities arise including moving down here for the first time that Leanne would do what she enjoyed the most and and in doing so she got really involved in all parts of our community so if there was a committee Leanne was on it if there was a you know, a social group land was in it, and 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 it may it meant that we could actually live a really balanced life. Even in years after that, when I was travelling extensively and we were moving around a lot, there was always a really a really solid base because of the decisions that we'd made or land had made about being the mum that was connected to the community and and doing the things that she wanted to do, despite. You know this kind of concept, maybe that a stay-at-home mum wasn't wasn't as equal. We didn't see it like that. So you have the three kids. How old are they now? Uh, Thirty-two, thirty, and twenty-eight. Nearly twenty. And do you have grandchildren? One and three quarters. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when's the new one due? Twenty-fifth uh, of November. Oh, fantastic! So both, Soon, they're both, both from my eldest. Our eldest, our son, 32-year-old. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so we've got a little girl, Zoe, and uh, we're expecting a little grandbaby boy. And how do you think, like with Zoe, how do you think she manages you using a wheelchair and all that sort of stuff? It's just normal for her or she yeah, comments or she wants to sit on your knee or like, you know. Well, she's 20 months now uh, and she has just, or the last few months, sort of knows our names and, you know, she's familiar with that. Uh, she loves as the this age she's gone through the pressing buttons loving you know pressing the yeah. buttons uh, and she what she do, really enjoys doing that she started a few months ago is sitting on my foot plate and we do the up 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 down down you know with yeah. that kind of <laughs> like learning all that she really enjoys that yeah um, I get a bit scared of her sitting like I always make sure someone's completely next to me yeah. when she's sitting on my knee just because like I you don't have, have no, such good strong arm strength. No, that's yeah. right. I could never yeah. do anything. So, um, yeah. So we get to do that, which is great to be able to have that. And I've I've sat her up at my table and sat her on my knee, and you know we've sort of done a bit of reading until she wiggles down again. But I can see that being a norm for her as she gets older, and you know, and hopefully when she can climb up herself on my knee and get down without me worrying and, yeah. and that sort of thing, uh, that we can you know, have those sort of times together. How's it been living in this area? Like just, you know, Drysdale's a small, <clears throat> it's still a small town, although it's been a yeah, growing town. Mm. Are there many other people that you know with disability who live in this area? Well, it's a, it's a, an ageing population here. So yeah. I think the, the people that I've met are, and are, we've made some really lovely, lovely friends and I think a lot of the time through, even though they're not necessarily disabled, I think just the wisdom of and education that that comes of age, they're they're very understanding and accommodating and that sort of thing that might our local friends. There's a few friends that we've known for twenty odd years since we were here last time. So they've yeah. they've known me in all my forms and um that you know that's been lovely to still catch up with them uh, when we can. They come here, we go to their place. And then, of course, I got, I started being, I was about to become involved in women with disability, uh, the out of southeastern group before I moved here. Yeah. Um, and uh, the and southwestern then, group, the new. No, the, the Amanda May one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the outer, yeah, the outer, outer east. South, yeah. Outer east, yes, yeah. that's right, yeah. Uh, and I had just finished doing, or I was just doing in the middle of a leadership course, 
through another organisation that folded opening doors. Yep. They'd, they'd run for a few years and they started off in Melbourne or like more Malvern sort of area and then yeah. they expanded out to our suburb and then they didn't get funding a year the year after that. Um, yeah. But... Uh, but then, yeah, so I then uh, through Amanda May found um, Deborah Haygarth at Bar- Barwon WDV and uh, had a lovely coffee with her. And uh, and we're, I've sort of now I do know people with disability because I have found a new group of really lovely, strong, interesting, you know, uh, incredible women. Can I just step back to <clears throat> when you asked about Zoe and how she is with a wheelchair? Mm. Uh, she doesn't see it. Our neighbours have got a granddaughter who loves Leanne and she doesn't see it either. When when little Hayley next door comes running in, she looks for a place to hug Leanne. So it's typically her leg or a knee Humanity. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> doesn't see the wheelchair at all, just loves Leanne. Her uncle's uh, a little person. He's um, short-statured, has yep. suffered a life of bullying and aggression against him, decided not to have children because of that. Is he like an older man now, like He's 20, 30? He's in his 30? 30s. Yeah. Uh, but but Hayley doesn't see any of this and neither does Zoe. Yeah. And, and this is the beauty of, of children, I think, is that they don't, they don't see this stuff. But it's also the beauty of visibility. So the more visible we all are, mm-hmm. you know, and there's more than one of us in this room with disability, that the more visible we are, the, the less dramatic it seems That's to right. other people. Let me, let me rephrase, they don't see it, to they don't see it as being anything out of the ordinary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it's not an other, which is why it was important to me to um, to st- uh, create my blog. I started that in 2017 uh, and that, that was one of the reasons because I wanted to get my story or, you know, this, for a start, my story out there of sort of what it felt like to go from taking everything for granted to um to to not being able to anymore almost almost everything uh and uh, hope in the hope that and you know a lot of many of my friends read all the articles which is great and I'm on Instagram but in the hope of also extending to other non-disabled people as well to just to make it normal like this is a person's story and you know and there's there's many people on Instagram and Facebook doing that now and I think it, that's what we need. And it, it, it's not like where we just want to be this little enclave sharing each no, other's disability we're not, stories. No, we don't want to be a colony. No. And we, want to, yeah. we don't want to preach to the converted. No. One of the things that Leanne always said was that their blog was to do two things. One was to educate people without disability and the other was to provide support for people with disability. Yeah. And most of the feedback that we get, particularly from people that we know, is, gee, you know, we didn't know. But but now we do. Yeah. We tell other people and we understand and, and so on, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And hopefully, I hope, I mean, it seems to be happening in some places, still not quick enough, but hopefully that will, you know, with that, then, all, you know, so many more structural things will change. Like we were just talking about Judy Human earlier. That's a really dramatic, like the, the people that sacrificed and worked so hard and, and, you know, so incredibly tirelessly, like, genuinely tirelessly for things to change for policies and and that sort of thing and and it, and we're still fighting you know still battling really people with disability are battling change in every aspect from schooling upwards you know to the to shops to I reckon you got to take a no tolerance attitude to this in a lot of ways you know if something that Judy Human taught us and more recently Grace Tame is that a zero back down zero tolerance uh, maybe get angry it is required. It's required because otherwise, you know, one of the things that I noticed about Leanne and other people that I know that have disabilities is that you and they spend a lot of time apologising. I don't. Sorry, can you help me? <laughs> sorry, can you? I'm sorry to have to move that. It's. Uh, I'm getting better. You are getting better. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Mm. I'm. I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> better <Good>. than you. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying, like the apology stuff is. All the criticism, side eye, you know, being being assertive is not necessarily being angry. Mm. No. I'm not apologising. No, mm. no well, way. And what I found, a lot of people, my, most people, I, I've been really lucky and maybe because it's uh, my disability is more recent too, but uh, people are really accommodating. They're very happy to, you don't, I don't need to apologise. They're, you know, quite often. You don't ever need to apologise. But what they want to know is what they got to do to help. Mm. And they're, they're mm. the best ones that say, mm. what can we do to help? What do you need? Mm. Uh, mm. They're the best ones. 
Mm. Except when they ask me what she needs. Yeah. That's a whole different story, isn't it? Yes. My funniest Which one, one? Yeah. in a women's shoe shop, <laughs> pushing Leanne in a wheelchair. The woman who is attending the shop asked me, what does she want to look at? And I said, expletive deleted, how would I know? Ask her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Leanne, I'm really interested in how people that you've known for 100 years are talking about you or talking to you nowadays and who's managing it better than others and how's the kind of disability versus Leanne person stuff going? Are people struggling with you being different or are they struggling with old Leanne versus new Leanne? Almost everybody I know. Um, closely that I regard it and we've got a pretty good social network and and including my friends and, and especially my sister, the one that lives in Bendigo, are, are incredible. They're really wonderful. They have always, they've always been, you know, what can we do for you? We know. There's one friend of mine in particular, She um, she's quite an emotional girl so sometimes that's a little bit hard because, you know, you get the tears and you go, I don't want you to be crying, like I don't need that. But she, she she's quite honest too. She goes, I don't really know what I can do. There's nothing. I can't change what's happening. So please tell me, you know, if you want me. And she's a beautiful cook. So for a while there she was um, helping out and bringing when Gary was working really long hours um, and I had sort of stopped being able to cook. uh, She was bringing, you know, bringing stuff over for us to freeze, which was really lovely. Um, But, uh, yeah, most people are really incredible. There are some that I – they probably weren't that – they weren't in my close kind of set to begin with anyway. Yeah, but, yeah. but, you know, you sort of just find that you don't really, you know, kind of get, oh, no, no, that's not true. I was, I still was invited to places, but there's just some places just aren't accessible for me, their houses. I would say, in addition to what Leanne said, that most of our friends mostly want to know what they can do to help. So if we're going out for dinner, can we book or, or would you rather book? But – not a single one of our friendship group, I think, responds any differently to you than they did before. The the part of the difference is that they don't know what to do to help if we're going out, yeah. what they need to do to support. Mm. So they tend to ask sometimes they're a little trepidatious, <clears throat> but generally speaking, the friends we had before are the friends we've got now. Mm. And, and and the other thing that I would say about it is that Leanne has a profound disability. Physically, and I don't think that a lot of people appreciate just how how significant the physical lack is because she's generally upbeat and positive and 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 so on. So I don't think that our friends respond too much differently to you. But what about you? initiation? But I would initiate stuff. I would be saying, "Oh, let's go to gold class." Mm. Um, Let's go to gold class and see a movie. How would that work for you? And initiate some dialogue with you around how how do we do that? Mm. That's that's a really good point because I think that a lot of the time over the years I've predominantly, when I'm talking about me and my girlfriends, one of the very maybe two that are the organisers, so I have – yeah, that's a really good point because I've noticed that doesn't happen. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't. Because I would. It's only if I, if I said let's go to the movies or, or that sort of thing. So, yeah, yeah, that, that's a really, really good pickup. And having said that, I do miss that. Like I do, I do know my social setting isn't as active as it used to be and part of that's, you know, like I'm and kind of. And none of it's malicious. We know that. No, no. no we no. know that. And it's, even it's just more about. Yeah. Oh. And even girls' weekends, we used to like once or twice a year we'd go away, a few of us for girls' weekends, and predominantly that was also organised by me and then they kind of left it up to me too as I my progression, you know, as my physical abilities sort of kept progressing. They, they were unsure about what to what to look for in accommodation or, or um, you know, adventures and that sort of thing and I was still struggling trying to figure all that out as well. Um, so I get why they would leave that up to me. And then I ended up, 
it, well, it it ends up you feel quite defeated sometimes with the you know the lack of accessible accommodation and you know the lack of you know people's awareness, their attitudes when you ring up and ask questions and oh, when they say, um, is it accessible? Yeah, yeah, there's only one step. Yeah, and yeah. Um, we've got an ambulant toilet, not a accessible toilet. Yeah, yeah, and it's still happening, but. We're, we're good at it now, aren't we? We're pretty polished. Well, you're doing reviews, so mm. I love that. Mm. I love that you're reviewing accommodation. And we also have a kind of no steps back attitude towards it when we get told we can't put bed risers under beds, for example, for a variety of reasons. We have a specific sequence of actions that we take to demonstrate to them that they can and that they will. So tell me what a bed riser is. I'm sorry, I don't know. No, and a lot of people don't, so I was thinking I might even do a specific like like well, a blog just, yeah, yeah about that yeah um uh, uh, and bed risers are uh, exactly like that a, they raise furniture like like so Jason recliners no that, they're actually no? just little plastic uh, cones sort of thing oh, that was yeah. sort of upside down cones and you sit your bed legs or your chair legs uh, inside these. And that raises them, uh, you know, like however, two inches, three inches, whatever you need. Oh, which means that and so when you're transferring from a chair onto the bed, it's at the right height for your hips. Well, that's it's for it's for people who self-transfer if they need to have a bit higher. Yeah. Generally, though, they need it a bit lower. But it's also for people like me who need a hoist to do the transfers and yeah. the hoist feet have to go in under the bed. And the various hoists, uh, the, our latest hoist now, which will be the only one I'll have for the rest of my life, is quite a super dupy one and we need a 14 centimetre clearance comfortably. So I think we can just do 12 centimetres maybe, but 14 centimetres. Um, and that's quite difficult for hotels to um, get around. Accommodate. So, some hotels. Some. So some are very good and some are very poor. And the good ones ask what you need and then accommodate it. You know, we went to a fabulous hotel in Hobart. We'd planned this holiday for three years. COVID knocked that back a few times. Yeah. And they accommodated it by simply stacking up blocks of wood under the bed. Perfectly safe, perfectly well structured. They just got it done. Mm. And other leading hotel chains have come at with come at it with everything from we would suffer from liability issues to it's too expensive to buy those things. We've never been asked about this before. We've never been asked about this before. So now we have a sequence of approach, educating them as to why they don't get asked, partly because of their website, mm -hmm. how they promote and how they respond, mm -hmm. partly because of their legal uh, requirements, yeah. which I have an educational process that I undertake with them. <laughs> uh, to do you mean it, to educational process or do you mean a the, the dialogue? Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, they, 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 yeah. they learn from it. They get yeah. schooled. Yeah. They get, get schooled. Well, yeah. I always think um, Stella Young was a friend of mine and oh. I remember her saying to me um, how one of the best things that ever happened to her, she went to a bar in Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. and she was having a great time. She's in the pub. with She's with her support worker and she went to the Dunny and she came back and she said to the guy at the bar, this pub is great. If that door opened the other way, I could just get in and out on my own without someone. And she said she, they got another drink <clears throat> and a guy walked past with a drill, just undrilled everything, oh, oh, oh. turned it around. <laughs> How lovely is and that? And just did it. And he was, a, he was an Australian guy, so oh. he obviously knows that we've got massive standards and all that sort of stuff. Yes. But in Austin, Texas, he just... Walk past with a drill, yeah, fine, you know, <laughs> and that's great. I love like, it. You know, it's so easy to accommodate at yes, times yeah, without this yeah. kind of blindingly just, damning bullshit around, yeah, it's, like it's we just, can't do this. It's just the brick wall straight away. They don't the, want the unthinking. us at times. Yeah, that's They right. just don't want us at yeah. times because yeah. it would, you know, muck up their routine. Yes, yeah, yep, yeah, that's right. That's what, that's what you feel and, I um I start now. I'm getting stronger. Well, I I think I've always been reasonably good. So we've kind of got our routine now. I do the first couple of phone calls and the emails back and forth, depending. Yeah. You know, try and give them pic, you know, pictorial pictorial information yeah. and the links to the website, like for bed risers, for instance, bedrisers.com.au, yeah. um, and uh, and it, they're they're all you know as to Australian standards and that sort of thing. All the all the bed risers they have. 
And then if I, I'm still getting crickets or, you know, getting hit over the head with a bat or whatever, then um, then I take send it off to Gary, and um, which kind of annoys me. I don't love to do that. I'd love to – well, I do solve them on my own well, so sometimes. sometimes it's just exhausting being your own it's advocate. It's tiring. It is because it's tiring. It actually is tiring having a physical disability. Exactly. It's fatiguing and yeah. tiring just generally, which I've only just started kind of admitting to myself but the last six months. But being a duo, but, being, you know, like a – Tap in, tap out yes. kind of couple. I feel very is, lucky. Is, is very strengthening. It is. But so it's not saintly. <laughs> it's well, not saintly. We're lucky as well. We're lucky that we've got – so I've got a, a degree in law and I've got – and I've worked in, in, in very senior roles in corporate positions for many years. So these things for me are not difficult. And when I talk to them, it's not, you should do this because I tell them exactly what – reasons exist and what actions we're going to take if they don't if you don't have the capacity to do that if you don't have the mm. the, the time or the energy or the or the the training or anything then then where are you so the thing about having a great partner and you know good family and education and all of that stuff behind you it's really different to a lot of other people who don't have the ability to do that sort of private advocacy and stuff. Mm -hmm. Some people just can't have have no one. Yes, and that's why I think WDV's mentoring program is fantastic. Yeah, um, I know one lady I was um, talking to, uh, um, uh, working with. She uh, had she hadn't had a holiday for fifteen years or more, and um, you know, and just the my connections, you know, with accessible accommodation, the website, and with Kerry Williams and. Uh, uh, and my knowledge myself of, you know, of being able to to go out uh, was, you know, has been really helpful for her. And I, uh, that's something that's crossed my mind so many times, you know, that I've thought about so many times, just how lucky, like I, you know, d disability aside, I'm, I genuinely recognise and appreciate my privilege, our privilege um, in the way we live our lives. And and, and there must be some way, uh, like the mentoring program for a start that you're talking about, where people can feel confident and comfortable and, and you know, maybe be able to tap in and sort of say, we tried to go to this restaurant, um, we still want to go, but, you know, I'm too scared to ask them for, you know, if they've got an accessible toilet or something and, and then have sort of like a little support you know, body that can just ring up on their behalf or something like that. I don't know. And yeah, there needs to be something. And uh, then, yeah. something, something on a practical, logistical level mm. where it's not just up to us women with disability having to manage it all. It should be mm. something that becomes a very mainstream business-like proposition that all restaurants, cafes, you know, accommodation places go, oh, yeah, well, we can – actually, you know, I mean, they, they can milk the disability dollar if they want to. Well, they should. That's and a silly thing they're missing People out want on. to go places. Yeah. People want to go on holidays. And the disability dollar is exponential. It's, yeah. You know, it's all their family, their friends, well, for instance, Talk last about year. what you said to that hotel about why they don't get asked. For yes, yeah, so the, um, the one of her. This was in the the last sort of um, Sarah, um boxing ring rest, yeah boxing ring round we've had, um, <laughs> yeah. which was pretty. It's been a great outcome. Uh, but the the conversation I had with her, she she clearly didn't want to add bed rises. Everything else seems like it would really work for us. Um, their room and and it's a modern new hotel and all that sort of thing. She clearly didn't want to, and uh, and one of her reasons was, which we've heard before, is we've never been asked that before. I, I said, I'll tell you why. It's because people, so many of people with disability feel like they're being a burden. They feel like they're... Uh, you, you, they, they feel like they're intruding on a space that wasn't built for them. It's not created for them, and also there. And the reasons for that is because there's no mention on your website whatsoever of um, any accessibility at all. <clears throat> um, and there's also uh, there's no you know there's no discussion there's no training with your staff there's no discussion there's no photo the, this place there's no not even photos which is very common unfortunately for yeah. accommodation providers. But even restaurants, they, they, we need photos. We need to see what the place looks like and, uh, you know, measurements of doorways and that sort of thing. So I said to her, they're all the reasons why you, you know, and they're two really big reasons and they're easy to overcome. They're so easy if, you know, if providers wanted to do it. 
find out more about Women with Disabilities Victoria, go to wdv.org.au. One example uh, of, of how much money people miss out on is last year for um, my wonderful mother-in-law's 80th birthday, we, the family, Gary sister, so both our families were our adult children and things wanted to organise a holiday house as, you know, not uncommon, you know, around regional Victoria somewhere. Yeah. And um, could not find one for love nor money, even through accessible accommodation at the times we wanted as well. Uh, whereas, you know, so so your choice is limited even. You know, just being disabled, your choice is limited yeah. to, to things and that's the really annoying thing, just that choice kind of being taken away. But um, so in the end we uh, we found, um, can I say the name of the place? Yes. Not, yeah. Yeah, RACV Healesville were fantastic. Like they were great. It, it obviously cost us all more. But they, it was actually ended up being a great weekend and probably even better that we had our own sort of separate rooms and that sort of thing. But they accommodated so beautifully and they got all our money. And, you know, these sort of, you know, big houses that won't have an accessible bathroom or wider doorways missed out. Like, And, and that's where you do feel like a burden because I felt bad that everyone just wanted to, you Be know. together. Ha- yeah. But, but the, all the stress, our daughter helped us, Gary was doing it too, trying to find the right place. So all that kind of stress and tension you know that all the unnecessary angst you know when you're trying to look forward to a holiday which incidentally when you when when you've got a disability your holiday the holidays are always never the same spontaneous they're never spontaneous but they're never no. even as relaxing well not for us anymore as they used to be do you know what i mean you don't yeah. just pack your yeah. bags and run off it's it's yeah it's it's worse than having like three toddlers i think with all the stuff we have to pack but I'm going to finish off. You do your like you do reviews around accommodation. Mm-hmm. You've got a great blog, which I think you should plug. You should thank you. I talk should talk about that. I should get on top of it again too. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us the name of it. Leanneswilllife.com. Yeah, and I think um, that's really important. But the other thing too is I think there should be some sort of collaborative organization between us all around how we're going to combat this kind of discrimination that happens mm-hmm. and yes we're weary I'm I fatigued you're mm. physically fatigued you know things happen but together collectively we can do stuff mm. and our friends and allies partners husbands wives friends you know whatever mm. can be part of this I, I just think you know everything about disability seems a deficit rather than a benefit or an mm. investment. Mm. Mm. Yep, mm. yep. I'm right. smart. You're smart. Just because I can't see doesn't mean I can't do. Yes, that's a really good. That's a really good way of you know saying I mean? it. Like, yeah, that's it's right. It's an investment. Yes. Yeah. You know, we are valuable invest investment properties. Like. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. And just even to know that there's that level of the you know that that amount of people in our population that that aren't, you know, that can't live in the way in the normal, you know, in, in the normative society. That's right, yeah. The, the, uh, the way it stands shows just how important it is full stop, like get rid of the money altogether and just realise that we, we're a significant part of society. We all want to kind of contribute in our way, I think. Yeah. And just be functioning. Yeah. Yeah. Check out Leanne's blog at leanneswheellife.com and that's L-E-A-N-N-E-S-W-H-E-E-L dot com.